Day 415, Monday, May 20th, 1 Kings 13 and 14, 2 Chronicles 11 5, 23 and 2 Chronicles 12. 1 Kings 13 1 to 34 NKJV And behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David, and on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you, and men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken, Surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. So it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, who cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Arrest him. Then his hand, which he stretched out toward him, withered, so that he could not pull it back to himself. The altar also was split apart, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Then the king answered and said to the man of God, Please entreat the favor of the Lord your God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me. So the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and became as before. Then the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. But the man of God said to the king, If you were to give me half your house, I would not go in with you, nor would I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall not eat bread, nor drink water, nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came to Bethel. Now an old prophet dwelt in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, Which way did he go? For his sons had seen which way the man of God went who came from Judah. Then he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode on it, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. Then he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I cannot return with you nor go in with you, neither can I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For I have been told by the word of the Lord, You shall not eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by going the way you came. He said to him, I too am a prophet as you are, and an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. He was lying to him, so he went back with him, and ate bread in his house, and drank water. Now it happened, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back, and he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, Because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord, and have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but you came back, ate bread, and drank water in the place of which the Lord said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water, your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. So it was, after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled the donkey for him, the prophet whom he had brought back. When he was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him, and his corpse was thrown on the road, and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the corpse. And there, men passed by and saw the corpse thrown on the road, and the lion standing by the corpse. Then they went and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. Now when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard it, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. 
Therefore the Lord has delivered him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to him. And he spoke to his sons, saying, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled it. Then he went and found his corpse thrown on the road, and the donkey and the lion standing by the corpse. The lion had not eaten the corpse nor torn the donkey. And the prophet took up the corpse of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back. So the old prophet came to the city to mourn, and to bury him. Then he laid the corpse in his own tomb, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother! So it was, after he had buried him, that he spoke to his sons, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the tomb where the man of God is buried, lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried out by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel, and against all the shrines on the high places which are in the cities of Samaria, will surely come to pass. After this event Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but again he made priests from every class of people for the high places. Whoever wished, he consecrated him, and he became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing was the sin of the house of Jeroboam, so as to exterminate and destroy it from the face of the earth. 1 Kings 14 1-31 NKJV At that time Abiyah the son of Jeroboam became sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Please arise, and disguise yourself, that they may not recognize you as the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shiloh. Indeed, Ahijah the prophet is there, who told me that I would be king over this people. Also take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what will become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so, she arose and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were glazed by reason of his age. Now the Lord had said to Ahijah, Here is the wife of Jeroboam coming to ask you something about her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus you shall say to her, for it will be, when she comes in, that she will pretend to be another woman. And so it was, when Ahijah heard the sound of her footsteps as she came through the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam, why do you pretend to be another person? For I have been sent to you with bad news. Go, tell Jeroboam, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, because I exalted you from among the people, and made you ruler over my people Israel, and tore the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it to you, and yet you have not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments and who followed me with all his heart, to do only what was right in my eyes, but you have done more evil than all who were before you. For you have gone and made for yourself other gods and molded images to provoke me to anger, and have cast me behind your back, therefore behold, I will bring disaster on the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam every male in Israel, bond and free, I will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as one takes away refuse until it is all gone. The dogs shall eat whoever belongs to Jeroboam and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field, for the Lord has spoken. Arise therefore, go to your own house. When your feet enter the city, the child shall die, and all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he is the only one of Jeroboam who shall come to the grave, because in him there is found something good toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam. This is the day. What? Even now. For the Lord will strike Israel, as a reed is shaken in the water. He will uproot Israel from this good land which he gave to their fathers, and will scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their wooden images, provoking the Lord to anger. And he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, who sinned and who made Israel sin. Then Jeroboam's wife arose and departed, and came to Terzah. When she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. 
and they buried him, and all Israel mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke through his servant Ahijah the prophet. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he made war and how he reigned, indeed they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. The period that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years, so he rested with his fathers. Then Nadab his son reigned in his place and Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he became king. He reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there. His mother's name was Nama, and Ammonitus. Now Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they committed more than all that their fathers had done. For they also built for themselves high places, sacred pillars, and wooden images on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also perverted persons in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. It happened in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the gold shields which Solomon had made. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place, and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard, who guarded the doorway of the king's house. And whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guards carried them, then brought them back into the guardroom. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. So Rehoboam rested with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. His mother's name was Nama, an Ammonitus. Then Abijam his son reigned in his place. 2 Chronicles 11 5-23 NKJV So Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem, and built cities for defense in Judah. And he built Bethlehem, Edom, Tekoa, Beth Zur, Sukko, Adullam, Gath, Maratia, Ziph, Adaram, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, I alone, and Hebron, which are in Judah and Benjamin, fortified cities. And he fortified the strongholds, and put captains in them, and stores of food, oil, and wine. Also in every city he put shields and spears, and made them very strong, having Judah and Benjamin on his side. And from all their territories the priests and the Levites who were in all Israel took their stand with him. For the Levites left their common lands and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had rejected them from serving as priests to the Lord. Then he appointed for himself priests for the high places, for the demons, and the calf idols which he had made. And after the Levites left, those from all the tribes of Israel, such as set their heart to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong for three years, because they walked in the way of David and Solomon for three years. Then Rehoboam took for himself as wife Mahalath the daughter of Jeremoth the son of David, and of Abihail the daughter of Eliah the son of Jesse. And she bore him children, Jeish, Shamariah, and Zaham. After her he took Makkah the granddaughter of Absalom, and she bore him Abiyah, Ate, Ziza, and Shelemeth. Now Rehoboam loved Makkah the granddaughter of Absalom more than all his wives and his concubines, for he took eighteen wives and sixty concubines, and begot twenty-eight sons and sixty daughters. And Rehoboam appointed Abiyah the son of Makkah as chief, to be leader among his brothers, for he intended to make him king. He dealt wisely, and dispersed some of his sons throughout all the territories of Judah and Benjamin, to every fortified city, and he gave them provisions in abundance. He also sought many wives for them.
2 Chronicles 12 1 16 NKJV Now it came to pass, when Rehoboam had established the kingdom and had strengthened himself, that he forsook the law of the Lord, and all Israel along with him. And it happened in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem, because they had transgressed against the Lord, with twelve hundred chariots, sixty thousand horsemen, and people without number who came with him out of Egypt, the Lubim and the Sukkim and the Ethiopians. And he took the fortified cities of Judah and came to Jerusalem. Then Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and the leaders of Judah, who were gathered together in Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said to them, Thus says the Lord, You have forsaken me, and therefore I also have left you in the hand of Shishak. So the leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. Now when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance. My wrath shall not be poured out on Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless they will be his servants, that they may distinguish my service from the service of the kingdoms of the nations. So Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem, and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took everything. He also carried away the gold shields which Solomon had made. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place, and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard, who guarded the doorway of the king's house. And whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guard would go and bring them out, then they would take them back into the guardroom. When he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, so as not to destroy him completely, and things also went well in Judah. Thus King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. Now Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there. His mother's name was Nama, an Ammonitus. And he did evil, because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. The acts of Rehoboam, first and last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet, and of Edo the seer concerning genealogies? And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. So Rehoboam rested with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David. Then Abiyah his son reigned in his place. Daily Deep Dive, the UCG reading plan states, to rebuke Jeroboam for his abominable actions, God sent a prophet from Judah, unnamed in the scriptural account, with strict instructions to deliver God's message, perform a certain sign and depart home to Judah without partaking of any food or drink. The unnamed prophet gave the warning, perform the sign and departed as instructed. Despite the personal effect of the sign upon Jeroboam, the king would not repent. How tragic and foolish! Jeroboam's stubbornness would yield decades of strife and, ultimately, the destruction of his dynasty and kingdom. We will later read of how Josiah, king of Judah around 300 years later, though prophesied here by name long before his birth, fulfilled this prophecy, 2 Kings 23 15-18. The Judean prophet departed according to the instruction of God, but he was soon pursued by an old prophet who dwelt in Bethel. We are not told who this old prophet was, nor if he was indeed a true prophet of God. His conduct does not betray him necessarily as a false prophet, since this one occasion is the only time we know that he lied. The old prophet's deception of the Judean prophet underscores the vital need to follow God's instructions precisely. The Judean prophet should have declined the old prophet's invitation, saying that if the old prophet's claim were true then he would wait until God revoked his original command in just as sure a manner as he had given it. But, foolishly, he allowed another to dissuade him from strictly following God's commands. The story of the Judean prophet contains the same theme as the story of Jeroboam's new form of worship, namely, 
that any compromise with God's instruction has consequences. Ahijah's second prophecy to Jeroboam when Jeroboam's son became ill, he sought out Ahijah, the prophet of God who had foretold Jeroboam's rise to power. This shows that Jeroboam still knew which religious system was true even as he continued to maintain a false one. By an intended ruse Jeroboam sought to discover what would become of the child. But Ahijah was told by God what was happening and what he should say. Ahijah made it plain that Jeroboam had behaved wickedly and foolishly, and that not only would the child die but also the whole household of Jeroboam would be destroyed and, ultimately, the whole nation of Israel would be cast out of the land, demonstrating, as so many other examples do, that the consequences of sin are often far-reaching. Rehoboam fortifies his kingdom when Rehoboam returned to Jerusalem he did so as a petty monarch of a much smaller and largely powerless kingdom. He was immediately aware of his vulnerability. There was an unfriendly Israel on the north, a powerful former ally to the south, Egypt, who was now closely allied to Israel's king, a number of hostile former vassal states to the south and east, and the resurgent Philistines on the west, and Rehoboam no longer had a worldwide trading empire. The future looked rather bleak. Immediately he began to fortify his kingdom. He established a line of fortified towns along borders, securing water supplies and travel routes. The kingdom of Judah was basically transformed into a small fortress, though its king no doubt still trembled at the thought of attack. Had Egypt attacked, Judah could have been easily defeated. Had Israel attacked, the ferocious fight would have likely ended in Rehoboam's defeat. Had the Philistines, Moabites, Ammonites or Edomites attacked, there could have been years of instability and constant dangers. Rehoboam did have the foresight to deal wisely with his sons. Like his father Solomon before him, Rehoboam had acquired many wives and concubines. Whatever enjoyment he may have found in this situation was short-lived, though, when a crop of 28 sons matured. With such a large pool of potential heirs, nominating one was sure to antagonize the rest. To reduce the potential for intrigue and infighting, some of his sons were appointed to positions of authority in the fortified cities, while others remained in Jerusalem. In this way, Rehoboam could put some of the danger farther from the capital while keeping a close eye on those who remained nearby. To further control his sons, he sought many wives for them, thereby keeping them occupied with domestic concerns, distracted by sexual pursuits and, enamored with the life of a mini sheik, many wives being a sign of prosperity and social standing. When one stops to consider what Rehoboam was forced to do in trying to control the consequences of his own unrestrained desires, it is really quite sad. Egypt attacks Judah as we saw earlier, Solomon likely married the daughter of Pharaoh as the seal of an alliance between Israel and Egypt. But we also saw that Egypt's sheltering of Jeroboam probably indicated the end of that alliance. With the division of Israel and Judah, the little realm of Rehoboam became a tempting target for Egyptian expansion. Despite his weakened position, Rehoboam foolishly departed from the Lord, and this within five years of assuming the throne. As a consequence, the protecting hand of God was withdrawn from Judah and the cruel hand of Egypt was stretched out against Rehoboam. The Egyptians undertook a massive assault against Judah and the prophet Shemaiah clearly explained the cause. Fortunately Rehoboam and Judah repented, saying, The Lord is righteous, 2 Chronicles 12 6, thereby confessing they deserved punishment for their idolatry. God saw this repentance and decided to lighten, not remove, the punishment. As a consequence, Judah became a vassal state of Egypt, and Pharaoh Shishak took all the treasures in the king's house and the temple. He took everything, states the scripture, verse 9. It is interesting to note that the Ark of the Covenant was apparently not taken, however, because it was in the possession of the Levites in Josiah's reign, 2 Chronicles 35 3. 
Rehoboam ended his days after a 17-year reign. Tragically, most of his reign was wasted as a petty vassal king, dominated by Egypt, without much power, and constantly engaged in border skirmishes with Israel to the north. The scripture closes its history of Rehoboam by noting that he did evil, because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord, 2 Chronicles 12 14. What a pity, so much tragedy could have been avoided had he only devoted himself to seeking God. And, 1 Kings 13, verse 4, the word for withered can also be translated dried up. It's interesting that after pointing at the prophet, his arm was stuck that way, almost as if it dried up like a stick.